Right, so next morning, early in the morning, I think it's still dark outside, and I'm here with Thomas, and we're gonna see, he's got no idea either because he's never done this, but we're gonna see if we can, well he can, weld the hole up in the head that I made. It's, uh, it's a case of doing it very unconventional welding, but it might work. And if it don't work, well, the more I think about it, the less I fuss, because A, it's my fault, and B, it doesn't matter that much, because, well, yeah, this head is now gonna flow a lot more than the others, but for what I'm doing, eh, it's not, not the end of the world, and also, it kind of goes against my, the whole thing of this car. This car was, the whole thing was meant to be easy to replace parts, easy to whatever. And a quite rare head, heavily ported, isn't an easy to replace thing. So I kind of went against my own sort of, what do you call it? Mantra, ideology, ideology yeah. Ideology. what we said this morning. Yeah. It's like, hang on a minute, what was I thinking? But, now it's done, you know, I don't just wanna <laughs> scrap, nice to yeah. It, will be, nice it will be great to use if we can. So let's see. And if not, I could probably still epoxy that up because if you look at any really heavily ported heads, they epoxy the shit out the, the ports, like massively. Um, what I'd probably do in that case though, is not, I'd probably epoxy it, but keep it as a spare for another time possible. Oh, I don't know, I can't decide. That's the trouble, see, I've got so many options. All good, we will see. Thomas is attempting to do this repair something that he's never done and it's in the worst place possible so if you can do it fair play if you can't then I really don't care Thomas filled it with argon and had a look and had a go. Unfortunately, which is I think what it's shown yesterday in the video. Can you get the light? Yeah. All of these walls are very, very close. Like here will be like paper thin to where it is. And so yeah, because it's paper thin, any amount of welding just burns more away, it just blows holes in it. So, in a word, I fucked it. But, in another word, kind of like I explained in the last video, it doesn't matter. If anything, it's probably maybe done me a favor because this really was against everything I normally do. Smaller ports, slightly lower compression, and slightly more boost would have would probably will probably do a lot better for the overall performance than what this would have done anyway so this was just a an experiment really on a uh on a head that i presume was going to be scrap when i bought it because it just come free on a a boat bottom end and yet it'd been welded up in the past because it had been corroded away but now i really have scrapped it so <laughs> it's uh <laughs> It don't matter too much. Back to the original plan, basically. Yeah, back to the original plan, really. You know, this was against everything I normally do. And now it's, uh, yeah, back to the original plan. That hole is in the worst place imaginable. So. I mean, we did manage to get it into it. We did manage to purge to have the good argon shield. We did actually manage to get to have the arc sticking out and kind of like on the bend mm. which i thought was impossible but it's just too thin it's and then thin. on the opposite side of the aluminium i mean you clean it very mm. good on this side but 
because it's paper thin, it melts. Yeah. And on the opposite side, it's not clean. No. It has a coolant contamination, chemical contamination. So that brings out and it just burns. Mm. So what happened if that was in the surface with a good material, you just burn it off, mm. clean it, burn it off, clean it, and then weld it. Mm. That's just not possible. No. There. Not when just, it's not when it's like that. No. So yeah. Um, one head that's now decoration or scrap or both but i would say it's actually better i mean you've done experiments learned a lot of stuff but the result is going to be better because for the ideology you're going to use that car for this is one of head kind of yeah and it's rare yeah you really want to ruin something very rare and difficult to replace if something goes wrong in something mm. like that exactly when use i know it and abuse it exactly I don't know, I really don't know what I was thinking, in all honesty. It's like, because the stupid thing is, even if I didn't fuck it up, I was pushing the head, so it's a lot more, everything's a lot thinner, a lot more likely to crack and so on, and you know, fail. Whereas, I didn't need to. So. Well, you get trapped sometimes, I get trapped in the same thing, just just trying to push more efficiency. Yeah, more efficiency, I know, I know, I know. Efficiency. The one percent, the all point oh one percent of efficiency, like worth spending hours to it. But sometimes, like, hold on, you miss the point. You yeah. missing the final goal. Yeah, that is exactly it. It's literally missing the point, going too far for nothing. It's like you know, you've got to do. It's not just value for money, as in your cost, but your time and in the future as well. And this took a lot of time that I'd have to have done again. It'd be making it less reliable. And it would be harder to sort in the future. It's literally everything I say not to do. I tell people in videos and Facebook posts and all sorts, do it right. And I was doing it wrong myself. So this has, yeah. But this is exactly what you told me about yeah. the crazy frog. Exactly, right? yeah. Because I was chasing the numbers. I was like, oh, I want more than five, I want six, I want seven, and whatever it's going to be, the more efficient I'm going to, I want rods, I want pistons, I want con, I want camshafts and all that stuff. And he's like, what, what, what's the final goal? It's yeah. the daily abuse, right? So what happens if the engine blows? If you prepare the engine with thousands of pounds on the engine, it blows, you're crying, you're crying your ass off. If it's just a standard block... Who gives a shit? Yeah. Just replace another one, just throw it in. Exactly. It's simple. I mean, so, that's why, if you think back in the day, that's why everybody loved 1Js, because you could get like, five six hundred break and if it broke so what just chuck another one in another one, exactly. if you build something it gets expensive but if you've got something and which is why i like the volvo engines apart from rods which are 200 quid they can take all the power in the world same with and oh, id 180 engines great example yeah. you could build one or you could put rods in a standard one and still get 600 brake, yeah. and if it breaks, so what? Go and get another one from the scrapyard for bloody 100 pounds. And that's, that's a good example. We come nearly every day, I'm pushing me away from, he was like, I just put this, I just put that, I'm, maybe a head, maybe it's like, mate, everything you're gonna put on there, so it's gonna break, yeah? Yeah, that's just life, you know what I mean? No matter what. Unless you're he's like, yeah. oh, fuck it, build me another engine. Yeah. You, no point. Yeah. No point, sometimes it's more reliable, it's yeah. actually easy to just not use another yeah. product. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And with the other heads, I've got loads of them. I would literally smooth out the bowls, you know, probably an hour's worth of port work, another hour's worth modifying them combustion chambers, done. Yeah. And A, it's not thinning anything out, so it's less like, you know, it's not gonna break in that way. And B, it's heads that they are 10 a penny. They are the normal production Volvo, heads that are millions of them out there someone offered my, me one the other day for free like, that was it? my engine i will not use this head i will no. use just a normal head even if you have a couple of percent less efficiency i know and to be honest yeah i would get more power with less boost from this one but for low down instant grunt the big ports of this no wouldn't suit it anyway it's the smaller ports of the other head would give better low down this would just give better up top so you know i was just doing that chasing you know it's the same as people running you know two thousand pound turbos on stuff when a 500 pound one would be 99 percent as good yeah. it's like hang on spend your time and money elsewhere because if a it's only a tiny bit better b it's cost you a load more and c when it breaks and things like turbos and everything else break you're crying because you've just got to spend another two thousand pounds and it's the same with this 
I mean, they're sent £2,000, but finding another one's not that cheap. It'd still be a good few hundred quid and a shitload of reporting again to make it like it. So, yeah. You, we fight our own minds far too often. And this is a great example. Nobody's fucking perfect for it. Everyone falls for it. Even me, I tell people not to do this. I still do it gotta always stop yourself i think this is as good a time as any to show the differences the main differences between the two heads this is a normal 530 head this is the super duper fancy 531 which i've fucked up first thing to note is the ports are different which can be a bit of a pain in the ass and that is a uh, I think it's an outlet to the heater on the this head that hasn't even been tapped that's got a different fitting which hopefully would come out and that one's been plugged which again would hopefully come out not a big deal also this has been drilled for another coolant passage there whereas this is blank so yeah fair bit of uh, dicking about this is just a spare 530 head which I used years ago to um, practice supporting on to see what could be done. So this is a perfect example of the differences. Right, obviously this is the, the knackered head now, but as you can probably see, the port is pretty big and opens up massively around the valve area. This one, the port is quite small all the way to the valve area um, this one is after me porting it and it's not bad at all I'm perfectly okay with that this one is before porting and you can see it's a bit shit it, it, um, it necks right down at the port so it it basically goes up in like a just straight up 90 degree in a circle there's no transition there's no nothing it just goes in the port and suddenly straight up but that's easily fixed to a much smoother thing like that so it's not a big deal and while small ports aren't as good for maximum power um, this these small ports here would probably more suitable for lower RPM performance anyway and the turbo and the cam does the rest so this would give more power but for what I'm looking for you know now I'm thinking a bit straighter this probably ain't the one to go for for me but this this is fine I'll show you the rest of it this is the combustion chambers. Ignore that one, because that's the one I've uh, modified by smoothing off the squish pads while practicing. That's a rough one, but look at these unmodified ones. They are different, but not by much. I mean, that is an unmodified 531. That's an unmodified 530. If you wasn't, you know, just doing this you probably can't tell the difference there is a slight change in the combustion chamber shape trust me and even the where the plug position is in relation to this one is slightly canted over a bit more these are more angled towards the exhaust valve than these they are more tipped than that but again it's not much this shows you how crap the uh, the ports are on these. Look at the way it just necks in from like a big valve to nothing straight away. But it's super easy to remove all that and make it, well, like this. That's standard. That's ported. It's very easy. So while these are better, well, the inlet ports are better, 
the difference, I mean this is unfinished still, but the difference is not drastic. At the valve bowl there's not much difference at all, pre and post porting. It's mostly further on where the difference is. There's that versus much bigger. But I fucked that one up, so don't worry about it. On the exhaust port side of things, they're identical. Both heads are the same and they're both crap. And the thing is, on a turbo car, exhaust side is probably more important anyway. Um, it's much like the inlet port with the port on there where standard it necks right in straight away. It's a bit shit. And that's the same on this head. And you can port it to be a much straighter shot. Which is what I did to all of these. So that really is it. There's nothing fancy. I'm not using a 531 anymore because I fucked it. And I am using a 530. And the actual final result for my goals is actually more suited now. I'm thinking straight. So yeah, I feel a bit daft um, doing that now. But, you know, it goes against everything I normally say to do. But, whatever, done now. So I'm gonna go and get a spare one of these and uh, get cracking. I'll show the exhaust manifold as well. This is a standard exhaust manifold, which again is proven to like, wow, I know people have gone well over 450 on it, and it's, as a standard manifold goes, it's quite a good design. It's pretty much tubular. It's got a fairly decent collector. The only things I don't like really is it's quite a sharp angle straight out the port, but no big deal. The main thing it needs doing is, this is a T3 flange. All of that needs removing. But, again, that massively improves flow because it means the angle here, rather than it all squeezing out that little hole, they can all come out much sooner where it should be. There's also some magic Thomas is talking about doing at the collector, but we will talk about that another time when it actually happens. But yeah, this ported, Lightly ported 530 head, lightly ported um, KJ inlet manifold, done. Done and happy and yeah, no need for going anything fancy at all. That's just purely my bad, so job done.